Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting section 16.2 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is about how to do provisional bifurcation stenting. Provisional stenting is one of the two main bifurcation strategies. Essentially, provisional and DK crush are the two main strategies one need to know to be able to do the vast majority of coronary bifurcations. And the main determinant about using provisional, which means stenting across the side branch, versus doing a planned two-stent strategy, which means putting a stent in both the side branch and the main vessel, has to do with the likelihood of losing the side branch and the consequences of losing it. So, for example, if the side branch is too small and it is not necessary to preserve it, then doing a provisional stent, stenting the main vessel, is the way to go. If the likelihood of occluding the side branch is low, once again, provisional is the way to go. But if no, if there is a high likelihood of losing the side branch, that's when a two-stent strategy is preferred. And again, DK Crash has the best data regarding two-stent bifurcation stenting. So let's go step by step about bifurcation. It starts by wiring both the main vessel as well as the side branch. We always like to wire the side branch in the majority of cases if there is some chance of occlusion because many reasons. The first, it makes it easier to recover the side branch if it becomes occluded during standing of the main vessel. Also, it can modify favorably the angle. We pre-treat the main vessel if needed. We often do intravascular imaging to determine the need for aggressive balloon dilation or other things like atherectomy. And once the lesion is prepared, then we insert a stent. Choosing the size of the stent is very important and has to do first with the diameter of the distal main vessel. The stent should always be sized in terms of diameter based on the diameter of the distal main vessel and the reason is that if one puts a stent sized for the proximal main vessel and this is much larger than the distal main vessel then two bad things can happen. One is carina shift which can result in stenosis or occlusion of the ostium of the side branch. The second is potential dissection or perforation when the stent, which is oversized for the distal main vessel, gets placed. So this is why the diameter should be matching the diameter of the distal main vessel. In terms of length, the length should be enough to cover the lesion distally, but also to extend proximal to the bifurcation proximally at least 6 to 8 millimeters. And the reason for this is that proximal optimization is needed in most of those bifurcation standing, and the shortest balloons are 6 to 8 millimeters. If uh, there is less than 6 to 8 millimeters stand proximal to the bifurcation, when we do the proximal optimization, we will injure the vessel proximal to the stand, and that can lead to increased risk for stenosis. So once again, diameter based distal main vessel length enough to have at least 6 to 8 millimeters proximal to the bifurcation. The other factor that is important is to know the post-dilation limits for the various drug eluting stents. For example, if you have a vessel with a proximal diameter of 4.0 and a distal main vessel diameter of 3.0, if we place, let's say, an Elunir or an Osiro, then this cannot be post-dilated to 4.0. So in contrast, for a vessel like this, we should use uh, something like a synergy stand that can be post dilated up to more than four millimeters. Having this printed and posted in the cath lab can be very useful when doing bifurcation standing and also left main standing. The next step is to deliver the stand and then deploy it, jailing the wire into the side branch. The reason for jailing the wire is once again allows access to the side branch if things go wrong. And then if there's significant mismatch in the size of the proximal main vessel with the distal main vessel, the so-called proximal optimization technique is performed in which a short balloon, typically 6 to 8 millimeters, is inflated with a distal marker at the carina, essentially dilating the stand and making good a position with the proximal main vessel. This is why proximal optimization technique is useful. This is before proximal optimization. 
there is essentially no um, opposition of the stent struts to the wall, but after doing the proximal optimization technique, the stent now is well opposed to the wall. What is the next step? The next step is to examine the side branch and determine if the side branch is compromised. If the side branch is good, then the procedure is done. There is no need to do balloon angioplasty either before or after. So side branch is okay, the procedure is done, and this is an example. This is a patient who has a bifurcation lesion in an obtuse marginal branch. The likelihood of uh, losing any of the branches seems to be low because there is no significant disease at the ostia of either of them. However, the branch needs to be preserved because both of these branches are large ones. In this particular case, we did IVOS. There is not much disease distally, but the disease is mainly proximally. This is essentially more of a Medina 100 bifurcation. So we wired both branches with workhorse guide wires, predilated the lesion, and then did provisional stenting, stenting from the proximal portion of the M1 to the superior branch, jailing the inferior branch. After the stent is deployed, there is a little pinching of the inferior branch origin, and the question is, is this significant? If it is, something more may need to be done. If not, then we may be close to being done. So to check if it is significant, we did the proximal optimization technique to ensure that the stent struts are opposed proximally. And then we did functional assessment. The IFR was 1.0, FFR was 0.9, which means that there was no significant lesion in the inferior branch. And physiologic assessment is very useful. It's been 15 years since this classic paper by Ku, showing that if the FFR is more than 0.75 in the side branch, after doing a bifurcation provisional stenting, there is essentially zero risk of TVR over the ensuing 10 months. So in this particular patient, we left the inferior branch alone and a nice final result was achieved. This is the best case scenario. We place a stand in the main vessel with do pot. There is no compromise of the branch and the case is done. There is no need to rewire the branch. There is no need for doing balloon inflation in the branch. However, this is not always the case. So there's a possibility of the side branch being compromised. And if that happens, there are different steps. The first one typically is to do balloon angioplasty of that branch. How is this done? Once again, proximal optimization is done first to ensure that the stem proximal is well opposed and that the new wire will not go under the stem stretch. Then the side branch is rewired through a distal strut, and we'll discuss why, followed by ballooning the side branch and then performing repeat uh, proximal optimization technique. The question is whether you should rewire through the proximal or the distal strut, and that's a common source of confusion. And the answer is for provisional standing, you always want to rewire from a distal strut. And this is why. In this case, the rewiring is on a distal strut. Once ballooning is done, then this portion of the stand essentially scaffolds the side branch and provides a better result. Contrast this with what happens if we rewire through a proximal strut. Then once the balloon is inflated, what it does is actually makes the stand protrude into the main vessel. So provisional, distal crossing is very important before doing balloon angioplasty. The steps are rewired through the distal strut. The gelled wire remains in place. This is very useful as a marker of the position of the side branch and also it can favorably modify the angle facilitating rewiring of the side branch. Next, we remove the gelled guide wire. And this is a step that causes a lot of um, uh, fear for many interventionalists because sometimes the wire may be hard to come out. The important component, if that happens, is to not pull hard. If one pulls hard and breaks the wire, bad things can happen. So if the wire is not coming back easily, the best thing to do is to stop pulling and advance a small balloon or a microcatheter over the jailed trapped wire. And then that usually is enough. Once the microcatheter or balloon come all the way, then by pulling gently, the wire comes out. If not, 
Balloon inflation is performed until the side branch jailed wire is freed. The next step is to either inflate a balloon in the side branch or do a kissing balloon inflation and then finishing with a final proximal optimization technique. So these are the two options is to finish with a kissing balloon inflation in which case you don't necessarily need to do a pot because the proximal balloons will act to some way as a pot or if only a balloon is used on the side branch that balloon can deform the main vessel stem and that is why a final proximal optimization technique is important to ensure that the main vessel stand is well expanded and well opposed. Here's an example of a case. This is a patient with an LAD diagonal bifurcation. Seems a complex bifurcation with Dyna 111. And for a bifurcation like this, you can make an argument that doing a two-stand technique is fine and that would probably been, would have been a good option as well. But in this option, after predilating, the diagonal uh, seems to be not terribly diseased, so we decided to travel provisional standing. So there's predilatation, there's a wire in both branches, and then a stand is positioned across the origin of the diagonal and deployed. Then proximal optimization technique is done, there is rewiring into the side branch, and then kissing balloon was performed and that provided a nice final result and doing intravascular imaging can be very useful in those cases to ensure that an excellent result has indeed been achieved. What happens if balloon angioplasty alone is not enough and does not successfully treat the lesion but fails to completely correct the problem? That's when one may have to put another stent. And there are different techniques that can be used depending on angulation, for example the TN protrusion or the reverse crush, thin protrusion for more um, 70 to 90 degree angles and the reverse crush for shallower angles. Many people, including myself, uh, believe more in the reverse crush because doing the tap can mean having some length of stent protruding into the vein vessel. So how can we do this uh, if there is a poor result? Is um, put a stent and this is an example of a case also LAD diagonal bifurcation. We tried provisional standing after placing a wire into the side branch. And then after the stand was deployed, there is a fairly significant stenosis in the first diagonal, and this is confirmed by coronary physiology. The IFR in the diagonal is 0 0.73. So something needs to be done and balloon is the first step, but if it doesn't work, then stenting might be needed, such as the internal crush. So in this uh, case, given that this was actually a fairly large branch, we decided to use um, a second stent. So we rewired the side branch using a dual lumen microcatheter, and then uh, predilated the side branch through the struts of the main vessel. Then we placed a stent from the side branch into the proximal portion of the main vessel. The stand was deployed and then it was crushed with the balloon in the main vessel. And this is very similar to the steps of the DK crush technique that are presented at another video. And then finally, there is a rewiring into the side branch and a final kissing balloon inflation. This provides a nice result. And this is an example of the internal crush which for me is the preferred technique if um, a stand is needed in the side branch, especially if the angulation is less than 70 degrees. What happens if after the stand goes in the main vessel, the side branch becomes occluded? And this is a scenario where having a wire in the side branch can make a big, big difference. And the key question there is, can we rewire the side branch? Because if we can, then it becomes the same as a side branch severe lesion, we balloon it, and then if we need, we place a stand. But if not, that can be a problem. And then having a wire there can really help um, either put a second wire in, or if not, salvage the case by crushing the originally placed stand. Here's an example. This is a patient with a bifurcated OM1 lesion. This is an example of a case that we thought that there is no need to present this branch this didn't seem to be that big of a branch, so we decided uh, to just 
treat with provisional standing because we didn't think that this branch was that important. We didn't even put a guide wire in it. So we predilated and then we placed a stand into the OM, jailing this uh, diagonal branch. And that resulted in occlusion of the branch, which we thought would not cause a problem, but actually the patient did have chest discomfort and had significant ST segment changes, both elevation and depression. So clearly this branch was more important than we considered. And now we have the situation in which we've occluded a branch and we don't have a wire, which is the worst scenario because rewiring into this branch can be very challenging. To rewire through, several techniques can be used. What we did in this case is use a dual lumen microcatheter, a twin pass torque, as well as a Fielder FC guide wire, which is a polymer jacketed guide wire. And then after a lot of attempts and various wire manipulations, the wire actually did cross into this uh, superior branch. And then we were able to predilate with a small balloon and that did restore undergrade flow into the branch and the patient actually had resolution of the chest pain and the EKG changes. So what next? Uh, we debated uh, about um, putting another stand, but that was a very small branch. So we decided to do a kissing balloon inflation, which was performed. And then there was a nice result with uh, persistent flow into the uh, superior branch and the patient did well. What happens now if um, we are unable to actually rewire the side branch, then it can be a problem. And this is one potential solution, which is to advance a small balloon over the jailed uh, guide wire. What this can do is potentially restore some undergrade flow, and then one can rewire, hopefully, into this branch, and then proceed the standard with uh, uh, kissing balloon angioplasty and final pot. This is a case of uh, a circumflex CTO with a bifurcation of the distal cap. The lesion was wired in the superior branch using a Pilot 200. And then using a dual lumen microcatheter, here's the injection showing successful crossing into the superior branch. And then using a dual loop microcatheter, we're able to actually wire into the uh, inferior branch, which is particularly important, especially when there's a potential dissection, as it's common in CTO crossing. So both branches are successfully crossed, and we decided to stand into the inferior branch and provisionally treating the superior branch, which retrospectively wasn't the best idea. Nevertheless, we did that, and then we completely lost flow into the uh, OM1. What to do next? We tried to rewire, but despite using multiple wires, we were unable to uh, enter into this um, branch. So after multiple attempts, we ended up inserting a balloon and actually crushing the stand that we had put into the inferior branch. And then essentially convert this to the DK crash. We placed um, uh, another stand in the superior branch. And then um, we deployed it. We rewired using again the twin pass. And then did a final kissing balloon inflation, treated the proximal vessel, and then had a fine, uh, a good final result. So this is an example of where having the wire jailed really saved the day because unlike the previous case, we were unable to advance a wire into the occluded vessel, and had we not jailed the wire, we would be have a very hard time uh, salvaging that branch. So to summarize, provisional standing strategy is a relatively simple strategy, but has many nuances. It is the strategy of choice when either the side branch does not need to be preserved or has low likelihood of occlusion. In the best case scenario, the stand is placed in the main vessel jailing the side branch and no problem in the side branch occurs, in which case we're done. If there is compromise of the side branch, the first step is to rewire through a distal strut and after pot is done, and then perform balloon angioplasty, which also in many cases can, have, uh, uh, can be sufficient for restoring flow and having a nice result. But when this does not succeed, there is significant residual lesion in the branch, then a second stand may need to be placed. Thank you.